everyone, I'm Emma, marketing assistant at Analog Wonderland. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. You may have spoken to me on our new live chat feature on our website or see me behind the scenes on our Instagram page. Today I am very excited to be starting our new how-to YouTube series. Following on from some of the blogs we have written, covering all things from how to travel with film, double exposure and how to store film, we will now be taking them to YouTube so you all have access to the best tips and tricks to make you great film photographers. And we will be starting with how to store film. So if you found your way to this video, I'm sure you've got a few concerns about the best ways to store film, but don't worry, you are not alone. This is a question I get asked all the time on the live chat. It is really pretty simple. The main thing I want you to remember is the three golden rules of storing your film, and that is to keep your film cool, dark and dry. And if you follow these rules, you can't go wrong. So starting with rule number one, keeping your film cool. Heat can be very damaging to film, especially if our film is kept in heat for long periods of time. Something like being kept on a sunny windowsill is obviously not ideal for your film. The general rule of thumb is to keep your film cool, but of course our film manufacturers provide us with temperature recommendations when storing your film and these can vary depending on the film type you are using. For example, black and white film is recommended to be stored below 20 degrees. Colour film should be kept slightly cooler at 15 degrees. And then a slightly different category with Polaroid and slide film. And it is recommended that you keep these films refrigerated or below seven degrees. I am sure there are a few film hoarders watching this video with massive film collections. And if that is you, there is another way you can store your film by freezing it. This can make your film last a lot longer, but this can only be done for color, black and white and slide film. You must not freeze Instax or Polaroid film. At Analog Wonderland, we store all our film on the ground floor of our warehouse and we only store slide and Polaroid film in our big noisy film fridge. The rest of the film is neatly tucked away in drawers on the ground floor of our warehouse. It is not necessary to store all your film in the fridge, although some people prefer it. It can keep your film fresher for longer, but as long as it's in a cool, dark and dry place, you'll be fine. Although if you do have a special film fridge, I am slightly jealous and it is definitely a cool thing to have. One exception to this rule, however, is Kodak's Pro Image Film. This film was actually designed and formulated for predominantly Asian and South American customers which of course live in hotter climates so this film was designed to withstand higher temperatures and can be stored at room temperature for a long period of time so that is the one exception to the rule and if you'd like to find out more about Kodak Pro Image you can watch our film review here. The next rule is keeping your film dark. Of course we all know that the way photographic film works and how we get our beautiful photographs is by exposing our film to the light but you may not know that the word photography actually has greek origins from the word phos meaning light and the word phra meaning drawing so effectively drawing with light and this is how we get our images so it's important to keep your film in a dark place where it can't be exposed to light accidentally the final rule is to keep your film dry hopefully this is an obvious one to all of you Unless your film is soggy with development chemistry, then that is the only reason it should ever be wet. This could damage your film and of course your camera. So make sure you keep your film in a dry place. There may be one other quirky reason that you can get your film wet. And that is if you are trying an alternative process called film souping. This is when you soak your film in all sorts of chemistry, different liquids like lemon juice or dishwasher detergent to distort the film which can create quite unusual colours and different funky effects. If you are doing this it is important to make sure the film is completely dry before you put it in your camera. Some people let it dry for a few months just to avoid any risks of breaking their camera or you can choose to soup your film after it has been exposed and hopefully we will do another video on that soon. So remember the three golden rules keeping your film cool, dark and dry 
And while it is of course important to keep your film physically cool, we also want you to look the part. So we have on sale a huge variety of gorgeous film cases and we have a lot of beautiful cases to show you now. So first up is the amazing analog held cases. These are ideal for photo walks or if you're out and about because they're so tiny and can literally fit into your pocket. And the 35 mil case even has neat little compartments to store your film and it comes with these very retro labels so you can label whether it's colour or black and white film in your case. We also have the fun and cheerful JCH cases that come in 120, 35 mil formats and can fit 5 to 10 films inside all with neat little compartments ideal for traveling or on the go and last but not least we have the iconic kodak cases these are my absolute favorite and now we have the new large cases which fit up to 10 35 mil films 8 120 films or a mixture of both and these come in lots of colors too and are absolutely stunning cases are also great because it means you don't have to carry around a load of boxes and packaging with you you can be ready to pull out your film and shoot straight away. So I hope that has cleared up a lot of concerns or questions you may have about the best way to store your film. And don't worry too much, film is more robust than you might think. If you do happen to store your film in not the most ideal way, well, I'll be coming after you, but also it's no need to worry. The most likely thing to happen is maybe a bit of fogging or loss of contrast, but you will still get a good image Similarly to how we view expired film, film always comes with an expiry date and people can worry about this and think the film is no good after that date has passed, but this is more of a guideline of when your film will perform at its best. You can still get a good image after it has expired, especially if you are storing your film in the best way possible. And some people even choose expired film deliberately for that unpredictable look or some interesting effects that you might get if a film has expired. So remember, the three rules keep your film cool, dark and dry and you can't go wrong. I hope you've enjoyed this video. For even more details, please check out our blogs. You can also see some of the amazing film collections from the community that were sent to me. And I look forward to the next how-to video. In the meantime, happy shooting and I'll see you all soon. Hi everyone. <laughs> Hi everyone. I'm Emma. Hey, I now feel do that myself again. Flush it. Oh, you're joking me.